Praise the Lord. Good evening. Hallelujah. We're just about to start our 7 p.m. broadcast and just waiting for some folks uh, to come on board. And um, so it's been a great day in the Lord. Uh, had a wonderful service this morning. Our pastor really preached her heart out and, and letting people know the kind of a day we're living in and things we need to do to stay prepared for the coming of Jesus. And um, it was just a great service. Souls came to the altar and got saved and, and renewed. And so it's been it's been wonderful, fantastic day. I see some folks are coming on. So um, just trying to see if I can see you. Um, here we go, Sister Pearl. There's Sister Pearl. I see her. Amen. Um, how, uh, the, okay, I see a, a, a heart coming on and some stuff. Good. Yeah, amen. Sister Natalie, nice to see you tonight. Um, let me know uh, how the sound is. Is the sound good and the picture good? Just somebody uh, let me know. I always like to know it's okay before I move up, move on. Waiting for those that are coming on. You're, you're kind of like our sound check people. Yeah, great. All right, good, good. Glad it, uh, it's good. And uh, hi, Sister Tracy. Nice to see you. Sister Donna, praise the Lord. Uh, hey, Pastor Paleo from Peru. Good to see you, my friend. God bless you. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. Sister Gloria Levine, how are you? And um, hope, hope all is well. And um, we uh, thinking of you yesterday at our tag sale. You always ran the register there. And um, I know your heart and your prayers were with us. It was very a fantastic day. And um, so just want to thank all of you who may not have been able to make it there, but you offered your prayers for the day. It's greatly appreciated. It was a beautiful day. A lot of souls came out. Uh, good evening, Sister Pauline. Nice to see you. Praise God. It's good to see you. Our friends coming on. Awesome. So we'll just uh, wait for a couple of minutes, uh, give folks a chance to tune in that are at home uh, going to watch tonight. Amen. And this morning, uh, church was fantastic, as I said earlier. And uh, if, you're, if you're able to get out to the house of God on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night, please do so. And um, I'm grateful for the broadcast here on Sunday nights and that all our services are actually broadcast. So for those who may not be able to make it to church, God understands and he knows and he will bless you in your home. Amen. Praise God. So we'll just wait another minute or two and uh, seeing some folks coming up here. Amen. So I was just uh, singing a little bit before we started. Um, just a simple little thank you song. Uh, I think some of you that are on know this song, so why don't you sing it with me while we're waiting for some more, for a couple more folks to come on. And it just goes, it's very simple. It says, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Jesus. I just want to thank you, thank you for being so good. Are you guys know this? Remember this song? Jesus, I just want to thank you, Jesus, I just want to thank you. Jesus, I just want to thank you, thank you for being so good. Amen. Praise God. Hey, there's my mama. God bless you, mama. Glad to see you on. Amen. My beautiful mother and all our friends that are coming on right now. Praise God. See hearts coming up. And uh, that's great. Praise God. Sister Kim. Yeah, that's an oldie, but a goodie, Sister Kim. That's right. Praise God. I remember those old little choruses. Uh, uh, you know, when I, uh, I'm still in the convalescent home ministry, 
Uh, I was uh, privileged to start up again a, a couple of years ago at a local home here in Manchester that called us and asked us for help. And we, uh, want, they wanted to have a Bible study, which is really, really great. So I was able to go out there once a week and give them a little Bible study. And you folks are going to benefit tonight because actually what I'm bringing tonight, I've been bringing to them for the last few weeks, uh, and it's about the Lord's Prayer. And I don't know, I just came across this in, in the Scripture, and I was just looking at it and reading it again. I mean, we all know it by heart. Mostly anybody who's a Christian knows the Lord's Prayer uh, by heart. But as I was looking at this, um, I, I got into it a little bit. You know, I started to just, you know, touch base with it and look at some of the things that Jesus was talking about. So that's what I want to minister on tonight. So I think we're pretty good right now. We've got our folks that are here, and there'll probably be a couple of more that pop on. But we're going to get started tonight with our message. And um, thank you all for giving to the church. Uh, you, most of you know how to do that now through the website at fgic.org or um, just send uh, the offering in to P.O. Box 4017 uh, to our pastor, and uh, we'll get it. Um, good to see you, Sister Jessica. Hey, Greg Harris, how you doing? You're home tonight. The Harrises are here. Amen. Hallelujah. That's great. Praise God. That's a church within itself right there. Amen. So tonight we're going to um, talk about, just for a few minutes, um, the Lord's Prayer, which is the famous prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. So let's, before we do, let's look to God in prayer for his uh, unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity once again to bring your word to your people, Lord, and to those who are listening. And Lord, if there's someone listening tonight and they're not saved, I hope through this simple message that they will see your, your will for their life and how, you, how much you want to save them and bless them. So we ask you to bless your people tonight that are here. If there are any needs of uh, those watching, I ask you right now, Lord, to touch their bodies, touch their minds, whatever their need may be, so that they can hear your word tonight in peace and not struggling, Lord. Bring peace to your people, we pray. Hallelujah in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. Praise God. Well, my text is going to be from Matthew um, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And uh, this scripture is also found in Luke 11, 1 through 4. So there's two places in the Gospels where Jesus talks about these words we're going to talk about. And um, so he says, that what the setting is, his disciples were asking him, Lord, teach us to pray. Very good question to ask Jesus. Huh? Teach us to pray. And, and Jesus gave them some instructions. You know, he said, don't, don't be like those who go in the in the courtyards and in the, in the sidewalks and raise their voice and, you know, yell out the prayer so everybody can hear them and so that they can, you know, be looked upon with, you know, as fame and, and things like that. And, uh, oh, I just want to say hello to Steve Kistner tonight. God bless you, Brother Steve. Good to see you. Glad you were able to come on, Brother Steve. And we're praying for you, Brother Steve, for your needs, and uh, I know God's going to help you. But he said, when you pray, he said, go into your closet, you know, go in private and, and talk to God about what you need. So the disciples said, well, how should we pray, Lord? Teach us to pray. And this is what Jesus said to them in Matthew six nineteen and in Luke uh, chapter 11, 1 through 4. He said, after this manner, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, or as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And I like what he said there. He didn't say to repeat these words after me and make this your prayer. He said after this manner or after this example, 
this is how you should pray. So the Lord's Prayer, as it's called by many people, is much more than just a handy guide on what to pray when no other words come to mind. The prayer, if we meditate on each petition, it will serve as a moral compass that reveals the best way to go before the Father in requesting his guidance and protection. Now, Jesus himself gave us these words to this prayer found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. More specifically, when one of Jesus' disciples asked the Lord to teach them how to pray, Jesus responded by giving us this short prayer that summarizes what Christians believe and how Christians should live. It's all here in this prayer, this little prayer. The Lord's Prayer is also known as the Our Father. You may have heard that in some religious circles. It's probably the most known prayer across the world. However, it is the most under, not understood prayer. It's, in other words, millions of people repeat the words, but do, do they understand what Jesus was trying to teach them? And that's what I want to talk about tonight, to give you a little bit more depth of meaning to these simple words. So, there are seven petitions in this prayer. And the number seven often connotes completion or perfection in Scripture. The Lord created, you know, in seven days. He created in six days, and on the seventh day He rests. But it was seven days of, of a, an event. There's seven spirits before his throne. So there's seven is a number that God uses a lot in the Bible. So there's seven petitions here that com totally compass our Christian life. And it completes a perfect summary of his teachings. Now the prayer opens simply enough with an address to our Father. I like that. Not my Father, our Father. God the Father is Father to all people, all across the world, every race, every color, creed, it doesn't matter. People belong to God, no matter where they are or who they are. He is our Heavenly Father. And that's how it starts. And that address reaffirms our core belief as Christians that God is our celestial Father. He's our spiritual Father. And he's with us in his spirit and above us in the perfect realm of heaven. This opening address of our Father also unites the Christians worldwide in one community of worshipers as we pray to our Father and not individually to just my Father. See, I, I often tell people when I testify to them or I share the gospel. I try to make people understand that God is their father too. Even though they may not come to church yet or understand the gospel, God is still their father. He's still in heaven. He still loves them and wants to save them. This is important. When you share the gospel with people, try to make them understand how much God cares for them too. And all they need to do is accept his his gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and what he accomplished at the cross. Amen. So after we say our Father and we address our Father, the seven petitions follow. Number one, hallowed be thy name. The word hallowed means holy or sanctified. God's name is holy, and God is the epitome of sanctity. There is no one holier than the Lord. Amen? He is a holy and righteous God. So when we address him and we say, holy is thy name, it reminds us who we're praying to. And it reminds us that this God we're praying to is a holy and righteous God. And then we as Christians understand that the Almighty Father is to be reverenced and praised above all else. 
In this petition, we pray that the entire world will recognize the holy name of God as the one true God of all, the creator and ruler of the universe. Jesus taught us to pray to our Father. And even though Jesus was an extension of his Father, even though Jesus was the Father in the flesh, he still needed to show us how to pray to the Father, how to pray to that Spirit of God that is ruler over all things. And then he goes on in the prayer to say, number two, thy kingdom come. Thy king we're we're to pray to our Father, and we're to acknowledge that He's holy, that we, we praise His holiness, we praise Him in the beauty of holiness, we worship Him. But then we have we ask Him, Thy kingdom come. Now this petition has two meanings. First, we pray for the kingdom of God to take form here in our hearts, here in our world. I, I thought about this. What if every Christian, every day, promoted the kingdom of God everywhere he went by not just talking about it and preaching it, but their actions, their, their lifestyle, the way they lived it, Showing people God's kingdom is here and he's real. That, that's powerful. So thy kingdom come. And, and, and we can have that in a world characterized by faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love will show people that God's kingdom is with you and here on the earth. It can be achieved. Amen. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Praise God. Hallelujah. Secondly, we pray that the promise of a new heaven and a new earth will be fulfilled. In other words, not only thy kingdom come in my heart and in this world to preach the gospel, but thy kingdom come eternally. The coming of Jesus Christ. We ought to pray that prayer every day. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. When that promise is fulfilled, the faithful will live with God and his kingdom eternally as members of a holy city in which there is no more death, no more crying, no more pain. Hallelujah. Praise God. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Then the prayer goes on to say, not only thy kingdom come, but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. See, God reigns from heaven with compassion and justice. Isaiah thirty eighteen. His will is that we praise him and love one another. We know this because Jesus summarized the entirety of God's word into two commandments. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew twenty two thirty seven through 40. Praying this particular petition is an act of selfless surrender to the will of God. In particular, we humbly request here for God to give us strength to follow his will. Not our own will in living a life that glorifies God and shows compassion and justice to others. People are watching you as a Christian. Your actions will show them whether you are fulfilling God's will or if you're fulfilling your own will. And this is important. Now, there are things we need to do in everyday life. We, make, we have to make decisions. But what he's talking about here in the prayer is, your will be done in my life so that I can help promote your kingdom, that I can help someone find you, God, that I can glorify you, God. I've been thinking a lot about the battles that we face. 
And I know that people will preach this and sing this. I, I, I know they're going to say the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. And, and in a sense, I understand that. But I got to be honest with you. Jesus won the victory on the cross. He defeated Satan. He made an open show of him and triumphed over him. Paul says we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Now, the battle is going to come, but sometimes we must fight the battle, but give the glory to God. Amen? So sometimes the battle is ours, but the glory of how we handle that battle goes to God. And if we will be victorious in watching our actions, our emotions, and controlling our mind and our heart, you see, this is where we have to fight. We fight the battle in our mind. It comes into our mind first before it gets into our heart. And if we entertain those thoughts, you know, those evil thoughts or those defeated thoughts or thoughts that things aren't going to change, and then we start to speak what we feel, well, what we're doing is we're not winning the battle. <laughs> we're not winning the battle. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that one of the weapons of our armor is the shield of faith? The shield of faith. You see, when... When and, and when he shoots the fiery darts at us, we have a shield of faith that quenches them. My question is, if we're getting it, if it's hitting our mind and our heart, where's our shield of faith? Why is it penetrating our armor? That's the, the fight. What was the fight Paul talked about? He said, I fought the good fight of faith. Glory to God. So you see, thy will be done, Lord. Even if I have to face a battle today, or, or I have to face a circumstance, and, and things aren't going the way I want them to go, I do not have to succumb to the feelings of defeat, to that circumstance. I can go to God in prayer and, and reestablish and reaffirm my faith so that it will quench the fiery darts. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is found in Proverbs. And I'll let you look it up for some homework. It says, He that controls his spirit, I'm paraphrasing now, He that controls his spirit is greater than he that takes a city. And I thought about that. You know, Manchester is a big city. It's got about 55,000 people. Do you know how big an army I would have to have to conquer Manchester, Connecticut? But the Word of God says if I can control my spirit, my mind, my heart, my spirit, if I can control it, I'm stronger and greater than he that takes the city. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, we, ha we are victorious in Christ. I think it was Stephen Furtick who said, I don't battle for the victory. I battle with the victory. Because I already have the victory in Jesus Christ. When I got saved, <laughs> cleansed and washed in His blood and filled with the Holy Spirit, I have the victory, but I must maintain it. I must maintain the victory thinking, the victory heart. Amen. So thy will be done. Thy will be done, and God will give us the strength to perform His will. Amen. Number four, give us this day our daily bread. Oh, man, this is a good one. All the Italians love this scripture because we love bread <laughs> and pasta. <laughs> I think we could throw pasta in here, too. And yes, it is talking about our natural food, our daily food that we need to live, okay? Give us this day our daily bread. But just as good food nourishes the body, the Word of God nourishes the soul. So the Bible instructs us, and it was Jesus who said this, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So we have natural bread for our natural bodies, but we also have spiritual bread for our spiritual souls to give us strength. So give us this day, Lord. Give me today our daily spiritual bread. Now, how do I get that? 
Well, I'm going to tell you an easy way to get that. Open up your Bible. Open up your Bible and just start to read the Gospel. Read the book of Acts. Read some Psalms. Just read your Bible and then meditate on what you're reading. It will be nourishment to you. It will sustain you. It will strengthen you. Amen. In this appeal, we pray for spiritual substance so that we can have the fortitude to go out into the world and spread his message through our words and actions. This nourishment comes from the word of God and from communion with Jesus. Um, who is the bread of life, by the way? So let's, let's change this prayer around a little bit. Instead of saying, give us this day our daily bread, give us this day our daily Jesus. <laughs> oh Lord, give, you, give me of yourself today and every day. He's the bread of life that comes down from heaven. And whoever eats this bread, amen, will live forever. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Live forever. John 6, 48 through 58. Take time to read that. He is the bread of life. Amen. Number five. The prayer goes on to say, forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, this section of the Lord's Prayer may be the toughest prayer to follow. However, this request contains much wisdom in it. While anyone can ask to receive forgiveness, reflecting on the way we forgive others can lead us to patience and grace that will transform our lives. Amen. I've found that we are creatures of habits. And if we practice patience and grace every day, it will become a habit. It will take root. It won't be hard to do. And yes, sometimes people come and test your patience. They test your grace. Um, just all you have to do is drive in traffic sometimes to test your patience. We've all been there. However, we have a choice. We can let those things that come our way control us, or we can control ourselves not to let it into our spirit and to forgive and to forgive those that owe us a debt. Amen? For times when forgiving sometimes proves especially difficult, the Bible teaches that a good time to extend forgiveness is during prayer, when our minds and hearts are united with God. Mark 11.25, it says, When you stand praying, if someone has ought against you, forgive them. Forgive them in your prayer. You see, when we forgive others, we free ourselves. They may not accept the forgiveness, or if we do something wrong to someone else and ask them to forgive us, they may not forgive us, but we've asked and we've made an effort. God sees that, and we are free now. We hope that they will forgive us too. I hope so, because they need to do that, because that's the teaching of Jesus. But we've come across some people that are, it's hard for them to forgive because they've been hurt so much. But, but the, God has made a way to heal those hurts if they will just let Jesus touch them. He can bring them out of that prison of hurts. Bring them, he said he would open the prison of them that are bound. You know, I thought about that. I believe Jesus opens the door to every prisoner but the prisoner has to want to come out. You, you can get so used to a prison that even if the door is open, you don't go out. See, take advantage of what God can do for you and come out of those places. Amen? Amen. By choosing to replace resentment with forgiveness, we reflect God's love and mercy in our actions. Thus, in turn, enables us to walk more confidently 
toward God, who wants our every step to be toward him. Now, listen to me very carefully. When we settle the issues of our heart, forgiveness, and when we remove hatred and enmity and strife and all these things, despondency, anxiety, when we free ourselves, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence then toward God. See, God is greater than our heart. But if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. I was thinking this last week about, I don't want to leave this world with regrets in my heart. I want to settle every one of those regrets. So if you have a regret and you're listening to me right now, and you have a regret about something, fix it. Make it right. If it's a, somebody it has to do with people, make it right. It has to do with something you did, repent. Make it right. Don't have a regret. Clean your heart. Let your heart be pure before God. You say, is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know why I know that's possible? Because Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It's possible. I know our flesh is weak. I know that we have problems with this outer man. It's, it's, it's a sinful nature. Oswald Chambers, the famous preacher, said, we are saved from sin, but not from human nature. It's still here. How do we how do we deal with it? We have to overcome it. We have to take control over it. That's our job. That's what we need to do. Paul said it this way. I crucify the outer man every day. I take authority over it. See, it's possible. You can do it. And, and God will give you the strength to do it. Amen? And all you have to do, really, if you think about serving God, it's really not hard to serve God. It really isn't. You love God with all your heart, mind, soul, spirit, and strength. And you love your neighbor as yourself. What? What's, it's like, it's so simple. So why is it complicated? Because we complicate it. We have all this stuff. We got to get rid of the stuff that's hindering us from doing those two things. Okay? So this Lord's Prayer will help you to do that. Amen. Amen. Number six. Oh, boy. Lead us not into temptation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Keep us, Lord, from temptation. Amen. Temptation can cause us to sin. See, now I'm going to spend a, just a minute here. Temptation itself is not sin. It's, it's a feeling to go sin. Like you see something of value. I'll use um, someone who may steal they see a piece of jewelry in the store and they don't have the money, but they really want it. The temptation comes to steal it, but it's wrong. Now, the temptation is not sin. They haven't done it yet. However, if you carry out the temptation, then it becomes sin. And then when sin has been completed, that's when it causes problems for you. So, the prayer he's saying here, pray to your Father to not lead us there, like to warn us when temptation's coming, to, to see it for what it is, to let the Holy Spirit you know, speak to you. And he will. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. He'll say, don't go down that road. No, no, don't do that. Don't think about that. Don't go there. Don't do this. If you see something that's wrong and it's, it's checking your spirit, stop it. Don't keep doing it. Amen? You know, deliver, lead us not into temptation. Temptation can cause us to sin and lead us away from God in ways that can be cumulative. In other words, every, every person who leaves God does not leave in one day. It's a cumulative effect. In other words, it's little by little by little. They, and, and then the enemy, he comes, right? And then we lower our shield of faith. And you see what happens is a progression and the fiery darts start hitting us now. And then we just think, what's the use? I'm a sinner. There's no hope for me. And that's what he wants you to think. He wants you to think that God can't help you. The biggest lie of Satan is that God won't help you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God will help anyone who calls on him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. God does not lead us to sin. We do that all on our own because we have a free will that he gave us. 
But our God is faithful and promised to provide a way out of temptation that we might face. So if you're facing temptations today in some area of your life, if you would take a moment to pray, God will show you a way out of it. And that scripture is found, write this down, it's found in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He makes a way of escape. We don't have to do it. We don't. You know, remember the saying back, I think it was in the 80s or so, uh, showing my age now, the 80s. Some of you that are watching probably weren't even born yet in the 80s. But I, I don't know if it came out in the 80s or late 80s, but remember it says, say no to drugs. Say no to drugs. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, say no to sin. Say no. I'm not doing it. That's it. Final thing. Amen. In this supplication, we acknowledge that our free will will bring with it human weaknesses. And that's what I was talking about earlier. We still have our human nature we have to deal with. But to overcome these weaknesses, we pray here in this prayer for God to extend his guiding hand over us and grant us the discernment, which is, the word discernment means the telling of difference of good and evil. What's good, what's evil. Discernment necessary to steer clear of temptation and sin. God will help you. You may, you may be listening to me tonight and saying, I've got this problem, I just can't seem to get a handle on it. Keep on praying. Keep on trying. Don't give up. Break the habit. Break the cycle. Do something else in its place. Turn the, the, the TV off if you have to. Turn the, the computer off. Turn the phone off if you have to. Whatever you have to do to get God's word open, uh, pray, sing, find something for your hands to do constructively, uh, a craft, art, some, take up an instrument for God. Uh, you, there's many things you can do. You can schedule your day filled with good things. Learn how to do that, and you'll be victorious every time. Amen. And then number seven, last but not least, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O oh God, from the evil of this world. Amen. This petition covers the many times that we do fall prey to temptation and sin, and, and it could happen. But during these times of entanglement, if you will seek the Lord... If you will ask him for his help, he will deliver you from your fears. He will deliver you from those things. Psalms 34, 4, David said, I pray to the Lord, and he delivered me out of every fear. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, we have to understand that there is evil in the world and there's evil influences. And so many Christians today are getting caught up in the political arena and in the, and in the rhetoric and in the, and in the um, influence of people who don't really want God and who, who just are secular and they want humanism and, and they, they, they don't want religion and they don't even. They, they just say religion is is for the is an opiate for the masses. Karl Marx said, the founder of communism, religion is an opiate for the masses. No, no, pure religion, pure religion and undefiled is this, that we clothe the naked, that we take in the orphans and help them, that we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is a pure religion. It's it's the gospel of Jesus, and it's real. God will answer you tonight and he will deliver you out of every problem. And the prayer, the famous Lord's Prayer ends with this. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want everybody that's watching me right now, would you repeat that with me in closing tonight? Because we started our prayer tonight with praise and worship. Hallowed be thy name. The, you're a holy God, my our Father, you're in heaven. And now we end it 
with praise and worship too. So let's say it together. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, at this time, if you have a prayer or request um, and have a need, let's all, all, all of us here that are online, let's put our prayer request on. Just put it on briefly what you need. And let's all pray together that God will meet those needs. Would you do that right now? Amen. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, uh, there I am. There I am in the midst of them. There I am walking. Amen. I see some prayers coming in for, for, for people. Let's all join in prayer together as they get posted and let's believe God. Lord Jesus, first of all, Thank you for the prayer you gave us, that you gave your disciples. You said, after this example, pray. It wasn't just to repeat the words over and over and over, because sometimes when we repeat things so much, they lose their meaning. But it's to think about our prayer and to pray after this way, to always acknowledge these things in our prayer that we will be good Christians in the world and show forth your glory. Lord, we ask you to touch every need that's come here on this screen. You see them, Lord. You see the petitions that are coming up before you. Lord, you sit at the right hand of God. You're our intercessor. You're our high priest. You're, t you, you're touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Reach down your hand. Reach down, Lord, and touch your people here tonight. If there's one here that doesn't know you, Lord, let them call on you and save them, Lord, and help them. Let them never be the same after tonight. Lord, we pray that you meet the needs that are coming here. And I pray that we hear back the testimony, the good report that these prayers were answered from this night. Because we came before your presence. And you're an awesome, mighty God. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Praise God. And uh, so great being with you. Have a wonderful night tonight with your family. And we'll see you soon. And if you can make it out to church, we'll see you in church on Wednesday night. God bless you. Okay. Have a great night, everybody. Praise God.